welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat from Ohi DIY and today I am going to be showing you a makeover of this IKEA lat table. So this table was £20 from IKEA um, and it looks like this originally. So just plain, really basic, um, a really great little table and chair set but if you want something to, a little bit more special for your little one and sit in your home and then I'm going to show you how you can pimp it up. So what I've done to the table and chairs is I have painted them and I have made it into a chalkboard table at the top. So um, instead of just being kind of plain bog standard tabletop, it's now chalkboard where Theo can draw and play on it as well. I have also covered the seats. Um, Again, just to give it a little bit of a more special touch, make it look a bit more expensive and it fits in pretty nicely um, with the decor of our home. So I'm going to get started now. I will tell you that this video is a little bit disjointed. As you can see, I've already made over the table um, and I filmed it in kind of bits and pieces here and there. I didn't just manage to get it all done in one go. So you'll have to bear with me. There are lots of outfit changes, um, lots of different times a day. Um, but I will show you from start to finish how I made this. So let's get started right now. I'm now in my garden. It's about half past eight at night um, and for some reason decided that this is a good time for me to do this. So I have got my Rust-Oleum chalkboard spray paint. You can get um, tins of sort of paintable paint. The only reason that I've got this is because it was the only thing that they had in B&Q when we went. You can get, I believe, five pound chalkboard paint from Wilkinson's, um, but we just didn't have a chance to go there. So I got some of this. So this goes on in a few light coats, um, a few minutes apart. Um, it needs shaking for a minute before you start using it. And it's just got a black matte finish um, and it's Rust-Oleum chalkboard paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the wooden side of the tabletop. So you can see the white side is there. Um, I just feel like it's going to go on a little bit better to the wooden side. Um, and it also gives me the option, if I did ever want to use the white side in the future, that I could just take the table apart, swip it, swap it over, and then you've got two alternative sides. So I think that's a pretty good option. Um, so I'm going to get started, start shaking this, and we'll get it covered. measures 23.5 centimeters just this panel here um, so we know there's going to be five triangles so I've divided that up into five which is 4.7 centimeters uh, and now what I'm going to do is mark that off across the top with little points I'm going to use Taylor's chalk to do this because it's got a nice I've got axe head chalk here so it's got a nice sharp edge for the chalk so you can be quite accurate with it. You can buy chalk pencils, um, again usually for dressmaking, but they're also good for this because if you're using pencils because it's unfinished wood, um, it can stain and leave a mark so it's better off to use chalk. So I am going to get on with the marking now and then we can start masking off. one other area which is at the bottom of the legs um, so for this section I'm going to 
do about a 10 centimeter mark so that we just paint these bottom edges. So we've got a ruler here, because I was finding the tape measure tricky. So I'm just gonna mark that off there. And there, and I'll do this on the other side and then I am just gonna wrap a piece of masking tape around both legs so that it's ready to paint. Right, so I've finished off the masking all the way around the edges, um, as well as finishing off the legs. And now I have a paintbrush, which I've got in a set of 10 from Quality Save for less than two pounds. And some deco chalk paint, which I got from Aldi um, for fiver. And this is in chalk white. So now I'm gonna get on with the painting. Also laid out all the other bits and pieces for the chairs so I'm going to paint the struts across the front and around the side so they're all white um, obviously you've got to do the top inside of the chair so around the cushion it's the right color um, and so yeah these are all drying now okay I've now masked off the table and the side so what I'm doing this time is I am going to paint this triangles from the top down rather than the bottom up um, so I will get on with that and then I'll paste the rest of it so this is kind of going to be painted in the reverse to the chairs so I'm going to mask off the bottom here and not paint that and everything's going to be white yeah so the reason I'm going to do that is because I think it'll look better if it gets marks on it if it's white than if it's the natural wood because then it'll just look a bit dirty um, so yeah, I'm going to reverse it and then they should look quite cute together, hopefully. I've also changed my paintbrush to um, sort of an art paintbrush rather than a decorating paintbrush just for this bit because I think the um, masking got really, really soggy and um, the lines weren't as crisp as I'd like them to be. So um, I'm going to try and use this just to see if I can keep it in the lines and then that will give a better finish at the end. So this is definitely working significantly better, so I wish I'd thought of this sooner. Um, so load your paintbrush up and just start in the middle so that that's where your bulky paint is. Um, and then just work out carefully from the inside so you can see that only a tiny, tiny bit is going over the edges, whereas before it was actually quite a lot of paint. Um, just even it out so that your brush strokes are nice and neat and then you can leave that to dry. This has now got three coats on just to be on the safe side um, because it's a f each coat was lighter so now I am going to peel off the masking tape. Um, as you can see acrylic nails. <sighs> frustrating. Very frustrating. There we go. Uh, and you can see that that's already loads better than last time. Still a little bit of a niggle there, but you can ease that out with some sandpaper, but it is much crisper. Um, so, yeah, guys, ignore the first thing that I said. Use a paintbrush, like an artist paintbrush, and do it that way because you get a much better result. Woohoo! Right, I'm going to take all of this off now and then finish up. So the final step for the blackboard, now that this is dry, is to just rub some chalk over the surface of it. Um, so that is the instructions on the paint, so I'm not going to question it. Um, I picked these chunky chalks, so you can see them. They were from Quality Save, and they were, I think, 99p, so a real bargain there. A few colours, and nice and chunky for the baby's grip. So I'm just going to get some white chalk, um, a big one and then start rubbing it over the surface. So you can see it's a little bit patchy. My spray paint work is not the best. Um, however, I don't think that's gonna make a difference um, in the long run. So let's give it a go and see what happens. It certainly goes on nicely. Rub it all over. Satisfying. See my 
my talk has now gone flat. Okay, everything is now prepped and ready. All my painting and my varnishing is done, chalk bones ready. Uh, so now all I have to do is put it all together. Uh, it would not be an IKEA video without something going wrong, I'm sure, because uh, even with instructions, I'm pretty crap at doing flat pack furniture, even though I like to think I'm amazing. Um, so, I'm going to get started, so I'll speed this bit up, but you can see, I can't imagine that it's going to be very difficult to put together, so I'll let you know how long it takes. planned on covering the seats so that's it all done all put together um what I have done on top of the video because I had actually tried to upholster the seats and it didn't work which is why when I put it together they were plain um, if you have looked on Pinterest you will see that people have managed to do this now you know, I'm not commenting on what anyone else has done. I wasn't there, I don't know. But for me, there was absolutely no way it was possible to upholster it as it came. Um, the seat pad fits so snugly into the grooves that you are not going to get fabric wrapped edges in, especially because if you bear in mind when you do an upholster, it goes over the top and under, so that's two extra layers. And then you've got two more layers in the corner, at least, from where you're um, folding it to get the corners square. So... Even for what I've done, um, I had to sand down the seat pad. So if you are trying to upholster it, there's... For me, I would have had to sand it down a lot and it would still have been touch and go whether it would have slotted in. Um, so I'm just going to put that out there that it wasn't possible for me to upholster it. I did try. Um, so what I have done is once I put it together, it was plainer than I'd like. So... Um, I have just covered the seat with some fabric, so you can see there. So this fabric's from Ikea as well, um, and all I did was lay the fabric out, um, put the seat panel on it, drew round it, cut it out, and then used Gorilla, Gri bleh, Gorilla Glue all over the top of the seat pad, carefully stuck it down, left it to dry, and then just very carefully slid it into place, making sure that the edges of the fabric were all inside the grooves. Um, like I say, I did use a mouse sander to just sand down the edges of the underside of the board because even the one layer of fabric was too snug um, to slide in properly. So, yeah, you, I think you, you will have to sand it down, but each to their own. The only other thing that I've done to it um, is that I have put a couple of coats of Rust-Oleum furniture lacquer over the top of it so it's a nice matte finish sort of varnish thing just keep, gives it a bit more protection because it's chalk paint it does mark really easily and obviously with drawing and painting and grubby little fingers um, it's going to get dirty so it just makes it a bit more wipeable because you don't want to go to all this trouble for it then to get dirty immediately um, 
I've also ordered um, some acrylic off the internet um, just to put on the top so then it is also a multifunctional table as well as a chalkboard and um, that's sort of optional and all you need to do is just measure the top and then you can order it cut to size off the website. Um, so I'm really pleased with it. Um, I think you know it goes really well with our decor. It doesn't look basic like the original table. It's not you know doctor's waiting room sort of furniture. Um, and it will be a little bit easier to keep clean if it gets marked. I don't think it'll look as bad as when it's the natural beach. All in all, um, it was 20 quid for the table and chairs and then probably another 20 pounds on top of that um, for the paints, the varnish, um, the fabric, which I already had to be honest, I didn't buy the fabric new. Um, so 40 to 50 pounds in total for a unique table and chair set. Um, it did take me quite a bit of time and the only time consuming bit really was this design because I had to mask off all the triangles. Actually, if you were just painting it or um, doing a less complicated design, it would probably only take you two hours start to finish to get everything painted, um, varnished, covered, chalkboard, all the rest of it, kind of two hours of effort put together. So it's a really nice, quick and easy project. And for 50 quid, you've got something unique in your house that, you know, kind of doesn't just look like basic kids' furniture. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is absolutely the kind of stuff that I love to do. I've really enjoyed filming this. Um, I have got another couple of IKEA hacks in mind. So if you would like to see more from me, then please do hit the subscribe button and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.